In this video, we're going to learn about the Smart Notebook drawing and shape tools that you see here at the top of my screen on the toolbar. And we're going to learn about some of the other tools that come in the Smart Notebook software, tools other than the drawing and shapes tools. And the version of Smart Notebook that I'm using to create this video is version 14 of Smart Notebook. If you have a different version of Smart Notebook, it's likely that you have version 11, Smart Notebook 11, but you might have even a different one than that. So if you have one of those other versions, some of these options might be slightly different, but for the most part, everything that I show should be still applicable to your version of Smart Notebook. So let's start here in the lower left corner of these tools, and that is with the pen tool. Now, as soon as I click on this, notice what happens. I get a pop-up over here on the right with even more options that I can choose from. And one of those is to click pen types and select the specific kind of pen that I want to use. So there is just a generic pen that I can click, and when I click the mouse, it allows me to draw with it. Now, if you have a physical smart board that's connected to your computer, an actual smart board, you can just use the pens that come with the smart board to tap on the smart board and draw, and it should come in the pen style and the pen colors that you select here. Okay, so that's just your generic pen. You do have some options here for the color and you know the style of the line. That's kind of fun. And then over to the right, you have three other options that you can choose from. There's colors, even more colors than what you see here. And if that's not enough, you can click more to get even more colors and to find some custom colors. Okay, we also have line styles. And notice that there's the thickness option, so you can draw really thick lines. There's the line style, do you want it to be solid or dashed or dotted or these other options. And then what appears at the start and the end of your line? Do you want arrows at both ends? Or do you want arrows at one end or no arrows at all? You get to decide what is found at the start and end of each line that you make. And then finally, we have transparency options. If you click on transparency, there's a slider and you can tell your drawings, your lines, to be semi-transparent or almost completely transparent or fully visible, okay? So you've got lots of options there to choose from. Now that's all just with the standard generic pen. Notice that there's also a, a calligraphy pen that you can click to draw with calligraphy style. That's really fun to do. And I still get all of my same options here at the right. There's a crayon pen, okay, you can draw with a, a crayon look and style to it, that's really fun. There's a highlighter pen, okay, and then we get into some kind of interesting different types of pens. For example, the text pen. Now before I show the text pen, I want to point out that pretty much with just about any of these pens, let's take the calligraphy pen for example, you can write on the screen some words, okay, just with a, any pen. And then when you're done, you can click back to the selection tool. This select tool or selection tool is used just to click and highlight things that you have drawn or written or typed onto the Smart Notebook page. Okay, so after drawing the word hello, I click back on the selection tool and then I'll click on hello and notice it treats it all as if it were one drawing. And that's exactly what I wanted, right? It can tell that that all goes together. Well, in the upper right corner, after clicking on hello, notice that there is a drop down arrow. And if I click on that, it has all of these menu options I can choose from for this drawing that I've made. Look at the very top, it says recognize hello. And I click on that, Smart Notebook just recognized that I had drawn letters, that I had drawn a word, and it turned my drawing into actual text. And this is editable text. You can go in and you can do spell check on it if you want, and you can uh, add more letters to it if you want. It recognized my drawing as editable text. So that's doable with just about any of these pens here. Having said that, if you're gonna be doing that a lot, if you're gonna be writing out letters and words a lot, you don't wanna to have to switch to the selection tool and click and pick the drop down arrow. You'd like it to be a little bit more user friendly, right? And fortunately, at least in version 14 of Smart Notebook, there is a pen that's a special pen for text called the text pen. So you select it and now you can just write on the screen and it should 
do its best to interpret that word. Now you just have to wait a second to give it a chance. If it's correct, click the check mark. If it's incorrect, click the X and it will undo the uh, conversion to text. Okay, so that text pen makes it so that I don't have to keep switching back to the selection tool. Next up, I do have a creative pen. And by creative, they just mean that it looks a little different. So this is like a spray paint effect. Uh, this, I don't know what you'd call that, a worm effect or something. But you can draw and, and write with this interesting creative pen. Here's one with some you know, nice bright fluorescent colors. There's another pattern. Here's one with stars. It's really fun. Smiley faces snow snowflakes at least that's what that looks like to me and you've got some flowers and so creative students tend to really love those uh, creative pen options and uh, notice that we do have some line style options for this pen as well as we do with most of them so that's the creative pen we next have the paintbrush and the paintbrush is um, you know trying to simulate the look of paint and then we have two pens that are really kind of fun. There's one called the Magic Pen. If you click on the Magic Pen, the Magic Pen can do a couple of things for you that are really useful. And the first is, if there's something that you would like the students to focus on in this very busy screen that we have here, what you can do is just click and drag to draw a circle. It doesn't even have to be a perfect circle. But upon drawing the circle, it gives you a spotlight. And everything that's outside that spotlight gets kind of faded, grayed out but the spotlight is crystal clear and so this is a way for you to focus the students attention on one part of the screen and hopefully they can ignore most of the rest of the screen as you saw you can just click and drag to move the spotlight around when you're done with the spotlight you can just click the X to get rid of it now I still have my magic pen and so I could spotlight something else now another thing that you can do with the magic pen is instead of drawing a circle you could draw a rectangle and if you do it will zoom in on whatever it is that you drew the rectangle around once you've drawn the rectangle you can click and hold the mouse button and drag in and out to zoom in more or less you can also use the edge of the zoom to uh, click and drag and move it around the page again when you're done just click the X to get out of the zoom so the magic pen is a lot of fun and very useful when you're showing lots of details to the students. The last of these pens is the shape recognition pen. And when you select that, you can then draw a shape. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It helps if it's close to perfect. But when you're done, it will snap it into the shape it thinks you're trying to make. So I was going for a triangle, and it gave me a pretty good triangle. I'm going to go for a circle, pretty good circle. Now every once in a while it creates an oval when you wanted to create a circle, but at least it gives you a chance to have a really nice shape, okay, pretty close um, to what you want. Okay, so try that shape recognition pen. It's a lot of fun. Doesn't always get it perfect, but it tries. So, so far we've looked at the pen tool and also a little bit at the selection tool. That selection tool selects items and you can then move them if you want to. Let's move over to shapes. And these are pretty self-explanatory, but to help with this, I wanna create a new page. My page is getting way too full and busy. So here at the left is my list of pages. I just have one page. But if I click here on this button that says add page, I get a second page that's blank. And here I'll add some shapes. Now just like with the pens, when I clicked on the pen tool, I got some options that popped up here at the right. Same thing happens with shapes. You click on the shapes tool, you get some options that pop up. And there's some typical shapes. You got circles, you got ovals, and you just select what you want and then click and drag on the screen to create the shape. So in some cases, that's gonna be easier than using this shape recognition pen. If you're gonna make a lot of shapes, you might just click here on shapes and do them that way. You can also select more than just these common typical shapes. You can click this arrow here to get a few more. And as was typical with most of the pens, over here on the right, we have colors that we can choose from for uh, the fill of the shape and also for the line color of the shape. Okay, and then we can just click and drag to draw the shape with those color options. 
You can also change the line thickness and the line style, dashed, dotted, and so forth. Okay, so that's kind of cool and fun. And then we have the transparency options that we had with um, some of the pens. In addition to shapes, we also have text. If you click on text, you get text options that pop up, different fonts you can choose from. You've got bold, italicize, underline, center, and some of these other common tools. There are more text options even if you would like to click this button here. But when you're ready to type, just click on the screen and type uh, what you want and um, it appears as text and as an object here in your Smart Notebook page. Now in addition to these basic shapes that I looked at already, we also have regular polygons. Okay, These are just more shapes, but it's got triangles, it's got octagons, it's got um, even 16-sided polygons. So just know that you have even more than just your basic shapes. We also have arrows and lines, if you select this option here. And you can just then click and drag to draw out your arrow. There's different styles of arrows and lines. okay, And you can choose the line styles here at the right. You can make it so that there's an arrow on both sides or just one or the other. And you can also make the arrow thicker. Just all of those same typical options that you get with many of these drawing and shape tools, you also get them here with lines and arrows. Okay, we've got the fill tool, and this is pretty typical of art programs, drawing programs, but you just click the fill tool, click the color that you would like to use as the fill, and it's like dumping a paint bucket just right on that shape, and it becomes the color that you have selected. The last tool on this list is the eraser tool. When you click on the eraser tool, it allows you to pick the size of your eraser, and then you can click and drag to erase some of your work. Now you're probably noticing it's not really doing anything. The reason it's not erasing these is because these are shapes. These are objects and text that I've added. That eraser is mostly for pen drawings. And so I'll go in, I'll put in some pen drawings, and then you'll see with the eraser tool selected, now I can erase some of those pen marks. Now the eraser tool is actually pretty important and useful in the Smart Notebook and in a future video I'll show you how you can use it to create some interesting activities. One more thing we need to look at before moving on is if your Smart Notebook page is getting pretty busy like mine are and you're worried that maybe the students will click and drag and move something and, and maybe ruin the masterpiece that you've created like this one here. What you can do is you can lock different aspects of the page. To do this, you have to have the selection tool selected and then click on the particular item that you don't want the students to move or delete or ruin. And once you've clicked on that, you should get a little arrow in the upper right corner, drop down arrow. You click on it and then choose lock, lock in place. And that will make it so that it's basically frozen there, it's stuck there on the screen. And the students, if they're trying to click and drag or touch and drag and move things around, they'll be able to move everything except that text or object that you've locked. And you can lock various shapes and, uh, and text items. This is great for creating instructions. So make a smart notebook page, put your instructions up there, lock them, and maybe even lock some of the objects that you don't want the students to move and then have other objects that are unlocked that they can drag about as they wish. We're gonna focus on a few of these tools here. The first one that I wanna highlight is this, the Show Hide Screen Shade. And as you can see, I've put a lesson here on the Smart Notebook page. This is a Spanish AR verbs in the present tense lesson teaching students how to conjugate AR verbs. And let's say that I used this in first period, everything went great, but I'd rather not recreate it in second period, third period, in each, in each class period of the day. I'd rather just leave this active on the screen. But the downside to that is that eliminates some of the discovery that the students experience as you explain and talk about it and discuss it with them. If this is just all visible on the screen at once, the students don't have to think it through as much. And so that's why we have this shade tool. You can just click that shade tool and it covers up 
all of your lesson that you have there on the screen. And then you can use these little handles. Notice that there's a handle pretty much on each side of the screen and you can drag it down. And so I could say, today in the class we're going to learn about AR verbs in Spanish in the present tense and how to conjugate them. And you could say, okay, let's look first at the first person conjugations. And then you drag that down to reveal the first person conjugations. And then when you're ready, you can drag down to reveal the second person and then the third person. So that is a pretty useful shade that you can use to hide and then reveal the notes that you've written in past classes. Okay, so I like that tool a lot. When you're done with it, you can just click the X to get rid of it. Another useful tool, especially for math teachers, is this measurements tool option. When you click on that, it makes it so you can put a ruler on the screen. You can also add a protractor, and there's also uh, these other tools, a compass, and this compass, you can just put it on the screen and you can uh, rotate it. So these are some fun tools, especially useful in a math class. Okay, and then I can undo or um, cut those tools out of the page if I don't need them anymore. Another tool we have is the table tool. If you click on table, it lets you drag out a custom table size, and then you can click to add it to your Smart Notebook page. And these tables are pretty useful just for keeping things organized. You can put different elements and different pictures or text into each cell of the table to keep things organized. So that's what that's for. And notice that each cell gets its own little drop down arrow with additional options you can use for the tables. Okay, I'm going to undo that to get rid of the table. Next up we have an, another useful tool called Screen Capture. And this is great for if you just want to click to, to take a picture of some element of the screen. So you can just click on this first option if you want. It gives you some crosshairs and then you just click and drag to surround what it is that you would like to capture. It then takes a, it then takes a picture of it and saves it to a new page. And so that's kind of a fun way to capture part of your page. There's other screen capture options as well, and you can see those here, and those are worth trying out. Now there are more tools on this list here. Um, a couple of them I'm not gonna show. Basically this one here, Smart Document Camera, when you click that, it's trying to find a smart document camera that you could use to take pictures and then bring those pictures in to your Smart Notebook pages. And then Smart Exchange, if you click that button, it goes to the smarttech.com website, uh, the Smart Exchange website, where people have posted activities and resources that you can pull into your Smart Notebook pages. So look into those if you have those resources available to you. And then here at the left are a couple of very simple tools. We have a paste tool, okay? So if you've copied something, you can click that to paste it. And, and then we also have a delete tool. So if you select an object, you can click the X to delete it. Moving to the left, we do have view screens. You can change to full screen view, transparent background, dual page display view, okay? So there's all of those different options. I'm gonna go back to single page display view. And then we have zoomed views or zoomed out views, depending. You can show the entire page or the page width. So those are your view options. And then continuing to move left, we have save. That's always an important button um, in whatever program you're using. And then we have open to open up a file that you've used in the past. We've got our undo and redo. We've got add a page and delete a page. And then these arrows are for advancing to the next page or going back to a previous page. So hopefully you're now very familiar with the toolbar and the various tools that you have access to there. Now one little known option that you have is you can actually customize this toolbar. You can add even more tools. And if you do wanna do that, what you need to do is right click here in the blank area of the uh, Smart Notebook toolbar. Just right click and it should pop up with this option to customize the toolbar. Now if you have an older version of the Smart Notebook, that might not work. Right clicking there may not work. If it doesn't work, then instead you should click View and look for Customize Toolbar in that drop down. 
But regardless of how you get it, once you see this panel open up here, you should be able to click and drag to add options to your toolbar. And there's one that I think everyone should add to the toolbar, and that is Reset Page. This is an option that you need to have. And so I just clicked and dragged and dropped it right there, and I can move it where I want it to be. But what this is for, let's say you create an activity for your students, and let's say it involves popping balloons. So there's digital balloons in your smart notebook. You put them up there, the students tap them, and the balloons pop. Well, at the end of the day, at the end of the class, if you want to reset it so the balloons are ready to be popped again, you could just click that button and it resets the activity. So that's what that button is for. But you can see that there's so many other buttons that you could add to the toolbar to customize it. There's a smart recorder, smart keyboard, there's pin page, clone page, clone objects, clear ink, just so many different options that you have. So. I would encourage you to explore those and see which ones you would like to add. There's also some other add-ons that you can add here and there are some tools. It looks like most of these tools I already have incorporated but if you're missing any of those tools you can click and drag uh, to add them back in. So thanks for watching and I hope that this has helped you to really become familiar with the Smart Notebook Toolbar.